All right, for the conservation of linear momentum lab, you're gonna be doing two different types of collisions, all right? So this is a picture of the track. You'll have a glider, okay, which can uh, go fr frictionlessly on the, on the level air track. On top of the glider, you have this flag. And essentially what the flag does is when it passes through this photo gate, the photo gate uses light as an optical switch. So the photo gate measures the time when this flag passes through it. And so that will enable you to find the speed of the glider as it passes through the photo gate. So remember speed is distance over time because the glider is gonna go through the photo gate with constant speed. And the distance that you measure will be the length of the flag. We call that length L. And then the photo gate actually measures that time. Okay, so I'm gonna go through the different types of collisions. So for the first part of the lab, you're gonna do an inelastic collision. And remember from our current chapter, the collision is inelastic if the kinetic energy is not conserved. So the definition of an inelastic collision is k initial is not equal to k final. Okay. And the way you're going to make an inelastic collision is these two things are going to stick together. And if they stick together, it's called a perfectly inelastic collision. And some books use the word completely inelastic. And how they stick together is here you have an attachment, there's a needle. And over here you have an attachment that has clay. So if I expand these, this one here, there's a needle. And then this one over here has clay in it. And the needle goes into the clay and they stick together. And so as this needle goes into the clay, okay, as this needle pushes, it way, push, pushes its way in, Think of it, you have that kinetic friction force that dissipates the kinetic energy of the first one. So in lab, this one is M1, that's the one you're gonna push, and M2 is gonna sit here. Okay, so the first collision, I'm gonna have a picture of it here. And remember, for collisions, you always need a before picture and an after picture, okay? So in the before picture, okay, um, the, the first collision you're going to do is the masses are the same. And in the lab, they get to be the same by, even though this one has a flag on it, this one has a little bit of clay on it, that way they're the same mass. Okay. So the first collision, your hand's going to be over here. You send M1 through the gate, and M1's going to go through the, the, through the photo gate, which measures the speed, okay, by measuring the time at constant speed. So here's my before picture. So this one passes through the gate, constant speed, and <clears throat> you're gonna measure the time T1, and that's in the data table, and you know the length of the flag, so this will give you the speed, the initial velocity of number one before the collision. Okay, this is the before picture. Number two is just sitting here, so V2 initial is zero. Okay, that's the before picture. The after picture is they collide, okay, they collide right there, they stick together and they both move off with one common speed V final. And then this same flag that's on M1 passes through the second photo gate. Photo gate measures the time. And then you know the length of the flag, you know the time it takes this photo gate, uh, this flag to pass through the photo gate, and that gets you the final velocity. Okay. So what I did is I have the data table here. I have the length of the flag, which I wrote that in meters. And I have the mass of M1 that's coming in and the mass of M2 that's sitting there. So for the first trial, the masses are the same. Okay, so M1 passes the photo gate. Okay, this gives me um, the time that takes the flag to pass through and that I can calculate V1 initial. Remember, V1 initial is the length of the flag divided by the time on the first photo gate. So that gets me my initial speed. They collide. So this picture helps too. That's my before picture. My after picture, and, and the lab will ask you to draw these before and after pictures down here. So my after picture, they collide and they both move off with one common speed, V final. 
Okay, and I showed that you can find V final by taking the length of the flag, because they're stuck together, divided by the time on the second photo gate. All right, and then you want to see whether or not momentum's conserved. So, um, oops, for our collision, okay, so again, we're treating this. That's our system, so there's no net external forces. So the collision forces are internal to the system, so there's no net external forces. So momentum will be conserved. So you calculate the initial momentum, calculate the final momentum, and then you see how much is lost, what percent is lost. Okay. So to calculate the momentum, that's why the diagrams help. So this is what you're going to do. You're going to do all these calculations in this whole area down here. Okay. So to find the initial momentum, Okay, remember, momentum is mass times velocity. And again, this is why these pictures help. So you want to do P initial. That's the before picture. So only number one is moving. So M1, V1 initial. That's from my data table. So there's my M1 initial. Oh, and, I'm sorry. There's my M1. There's M1. And here's my V1 initial, which is right there. Okay? And that gives me my initial momentum. My final picture... Okay, final picture, okay, um, or I'm sorry, my final momentum, the picture helps me because my picture shows that they're stuck together. So momentum is mass times velocity, well, they're stuck together. So the mass is M1 plus M2. That's what my picture shows right there. And then V final, that's right here. Okay, that gives me my final momentum. Okay, so there's my P final. Okay, put that right there. And then I calculate my percent momentum lost. Okay, so I look at how much did it change. So I, ideally, right, momentum should be conserved. So the change should be zero. So P initial should be equal to P final. But you always have some external forces introduced when these things collide on the track. It's not perfectly frictionless. The track can sometimes exert forces on the gliders when they rock back and forth when they collide. So you calculate your P initial minus P final, do this in absolute value. So I did that here, multiply by 100%. And so my first calculation, I find that um, momentum is conserved to within uh, more than 97%. So only about 2.8% of the momentum is lost. Could have been lost due to friction on the track, okay? Or maybe I wasn't careful in measuring the length of my flag, all right? Or maybe my track wasn't perfectly level. All right, so you calculate momentum, oh, um, all the velocities, all the momenta, all the, the change in momentum or the percent momentum lost, okay? Now you check to see whether or not kinetic energy is conserved. So you have an inelastic collision, all right? So when you calculate K initial, okay, so again, the picture helps, okay? I didn't ask you to draw the picture, but I just redrew the picture. So initial kinetic energy, only number one's moving. So one half M V one initial squared. Final picture, final kinetic energy, they're both stuck together, okay? So kinetic energy is one half mv squared. If they're stuck together, it's both masses, okay? And so these v's come from over here, okay? So I have my k initial, have my k final, and then I calculate what percent of the kinetic energy is lost, and here I have more than half of it's lost, okay? So where does it go? Well, when number one collides into number two, there's that pin that pushes into the clay, all right? So if you took that pin and push it into the clay and you kept doing that for half an hour, that clay would start to get warm and soft. So you have that kinetic energy of number one being dissipated by the kinetic friction force when that pin goes into the clay, okay? All right, the second collision is an elastic collision. And an elastic collision is one in which the kinetic energy is conserved, okay? So that collision looks like this. So here's my before picture. There's your hand. You send M1 through the photo gate, okay? So the photo gate measures the time, which allows you to get the initial velocity, number one, okay? Number two is just sitting here, all right? Now, what's different about... Uh, this part is to make the collision elastic, you replace the needle and clay with these rubber bands, these little bumpers. Okay, so that's going to represent or simulate a 
an, in, or an elastic collision. Okay, so um, for this part, for part two of the lab, the masses are the same. So number two, what's different here is number two also has a flag. Okay, so L1 is the length of the first flag, L2 is the length of the second flag. So my before picture is number one's moving, number two's at rest. My after picture is they collide. Okay, so they collided over here. That was where number two was. Number one came in, collided. Okay, so you're going to find, which we showed in the notes, that number one stops. Okay, number one stops. And number two is going to go out with the same velocity that number one had because the masses are the same. And then this photogate here, okay, measures uh, the final velocity of number two. Because when number two passes the photogate, you know the length of the flag. Okay, you know the length of the flag. You know T2, that's the time on the photogate. And then you can calculate the velocity for number two in meters per second. So it's an elastic collision and you've made the masses the same because you want number one to stop because you don't have a third photo gate in here to measure any residual velocity from number one. Okay, so here's my data table and I have two flags. Okay, so I measure the length of each flag. Just be careful, they're a little bit different. Here's the masses of each one. Masses are the same. Okay, you don't have to put in any numbers here. Masses are the same for all the collisions. We're just varying the, the speeds. And so you'll need to calculate the velocity before and after the collision. So here's my pictures here. So my before picture, the only thing that's moving is M1. So V1 initial, that's what this is. Okay, that's V1 initial. Whoops, that's L1 over T1. Here's my L1. There's my T1. V final two, that's V final two, is the length of flag number two divided by the time two on the photo gate. Okay, so be careful because here's what your, what your after pictures here will show, right? It says draw your before and after pictures, is they're not stuck together, okay? So when you calculate your final momentum, I mean, when you calculate your initial momentum, okay? So P initial is M1 V1 initial. When you calculate P final, okay, this picture shows that they're not stuck together. So the only thing that's moving is M2 and its velocity is V2 final. Okay. So you calculate P initial, that goes there. You calculate P final, that goes there. And then you calculate how much, uh, what, what percent of your momentum is lost, and that goes there. Okay. And then you're going to calculate, or you're going to test for whether or not kinetic energy is conserved. So it's an elastic, it's an elastic collision, so you should find that the kinetic energy will be conserved. Okay, so the percent kinetic energy lost ideally would be zero. Okay, but you still have friction when the rubber bands collide and maybe the gliders bounce a little bit on the track, you introduce some friction. So these should be much less than 10%. Okay, so you can look back at your pictures when you calculate K initial, okay, only number one is moving. So it's one half M1 V1 initial squared. K final, go back and look at your picture, okay, only number two is moving. So you wouldn't add the masses. Only one half mass of two, V2 final squared. So calculate your K initials, K finals, percent kinetic energy lost, and you can answer yes or no as to whether or not you find that kinetic energy is conserved. Okay. All right. And we'll work on that as well. And then I will let you know um, when I'll have you um, submit all these pages.